I never liked the term molecular gastronomy. It really just means the science of cooking. It, it doesn't reveal anything about the process or the chef. What we're doing here at Epic has never been attempted before. If you had to give it a name, I suppose you would call it cellular gastronomy. Technology in the kitchen? It's nothing new, of course. The industry has been innovating for well over a century. Technology as a food is a much more recent phenomenon. It's not that we ran out of ideas. We just ran out of time. Twenty years ago, the idea of a restaurant like Epic would have been pure science fiction. <laughs> I think a lab-grown chicken breast costs somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $9,000. <laughs> Can you imagine? Cultured meat was always inevitable. In fact, when traditional meat was banned in 2032, it was almost too late. You know, back in those days, the industry was using 70% of the world's water and contributing 18% to global greenhouse emissions. The planet was begging for a change. So we gave it to him. I think the real watershed moment for Sebastian was the return of the mammoth. That really helped to coalesce his vision. We've now reintroduced seven Pleiocenic species back into the wild through the Foundation. This is not about satisfying the exotic taste of the mega-rich. The extinction remains an incredibly expensive endeavor, and the program is not going to fund itself. We've been farming cells as far back as the Pleiogenic Epoch, and right now, we're on the verge of synthesizing our very first Cretaceous dishes. We hope to be serving those in the restaurant by spring of 2037. Epic is so much more than a restaurant. It's a platform for education and philanthropy, a movement to restore the natural order of things, a chance to make the world right again. And we're just trying to play our small part